Hello, I'm Alexa. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I make videos about product design, careers in tech, and life. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm about to hop on a call with Jonathan Courtney, who's the CEO and founder of AJ and Smart. AJ and Smart is a design agency based on Berlin, and they're also known to have a very popular UX and product design focused YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend checking out their videos. Lots of good stuff over there, a lot of really important lessons and good teaching opportunities. Okay, I think that's it. I'm about to hop on this call with Jonathan, so I'll see you over there. Hey. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you, Alexa. Well, nice to meet you. How's it going? Very good. Not too bad. Just, uh, you know, enjoying the pandemic like everyone else. Yes. Actually, uh, I saw you just went live on Instagram like an hour, hour and a half ago. Yeah. Just, did, I just like randomly between things, I'll do a quick Instagram live and uh, never for any reason though. You know? Yeah. Super fun. Wow. It is so nice to meet you. We're here today to talk about a really special project that you've been working on. But before we jump into that, I kind of just wanted to lay some context. What is your story about <laughs> how you became a designer? Yeah. So short story is, I guess I was obsessed with design um, from about the age of about 15. I was, for some reason, I really wanted to be like a magazine designer, um, was obsessed with fonts. By the time I was like 16, I was trying to make my own magazine, um, was really nerding out. I remember like buying magazines and looking through them and looking to see if I could figure out which fonts they were using. Um, I was also making like, um, you know, flyers for different bands and for my own band. And slowly that developed to like web design and making people's websites, like maybe making my mom's website. Uh, very important stuff, you know, that's the, the real way to learn. And uh, then I, I went and studied something called digital media production, which sort, which sort of mixed like design and filmmaking and animation, which was all the stuff I liked and uh, got out of college, thought I would kind of pursue the filmmaking side of it and just use the design side of it as like my money maker to make my passion projects, which was film. And yeah, that was uh, 11 years ago or something. And, um, you know, very quickly I realized I really was obsessed with UX design, with, uh, with designing products, with... Uh, you know, coming up with new ideas and, and making them into real things. And uh, yeah, just very much got into the world of design and started my own agency within a year of getting out of college and never looked back. So fun. I love that you've brought film back into your work with your YouTube channel, that AJ and Smart. Yes. Yeah, that's so fun. I love that. I'm super curious. So AJ and Smart, you started this company with your friend Michael. Yeah. Michael does not Michael's name is not start with an A. What is AJ? <laughs> uh, okay, so AJ and Smart, um, it was actually three people who started okay. it in the beginning. Got it was it. me, uh, the bass player in my band, whose name was Alex. So oh. he's the A. So Alex, Jonathan, and Michael Smart. And the reason it's called AJ and Smart is we had like a few hours to come up with a name when we went to like this, um, the place where you get your company turned into a company so that we could charge a client. And so we actually didn't think we would keep the company open. We just wanted to get the, the bill. Uh, so just, it was just like Michael's idea was jam, Jonathan, Alex, Michael. And I was like, I want it to sound more expensive, kind of like a law firm, AJ and smart. And we're like, yeah, let's just do that. Now it's again, we're like almost a decade later and it's still the same. Very cool. Love that story. Um, okay. So you just wrote a book. That is so somehow, cool. somehow. Yeah. I, uh, I love that. I'm super jealous. I just, over the last year, maybe year and a half have been personally interested in like, I want to write a book one day. Um, so I think it's super cool that you have it's called the workshopper, play, uh, workshopper playbook. Is that right? The workshopper playbook. Exactly. Here it is. Beautiful. I don't know if it's, yes. this is actually one of the early prints because we're still waiting, uh, on the, this is like not as nice as the actual one. The, uh, the actual one doesn't have this annoying line right here. Well, I was lucky to get my hands on a copy of it already. So I was reading through the introduction and I love the story that you shared. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. I was like, um, I'm not going to tell the story because I think it would be really special for people to read it themselves. But what I really loved about it was that I, um, I talk about success as this like combination of hard work and getting lucky and like yeah. you need both, you can't have one or the other, like you need both in order to be successful. And hard work is sort of easy sort of to think about at least it's like the tangible thing, the work you got to do, the time you got to put in the craft, but the, like the getting lucky part is like the serendipitous moments in your life, the doing things that scare you, putting yourself out there, meeting new people. That's the part that's like, you got to create your own luck. That's also yeah. super important. 
And so the story you shared was what I sort of thought was like your lucky moment. And I love that so much. It sort of was like the moment that jump started this all for you. Asian yeah. Sport, and then all the sprint work you've done and then now to you writing this book. So I just thought that was so special. So yeah, glad- I think you're, you're right though. I mean, like a lot of, I, I have to say, I'm not a, I'm a very distracted person. I, I'm not a person who can like, you know, sit down and work on one thing for a long time. This book was a nightmare because of that uh, mindset that I have that I'm not used to doing that. But what I am good at, I guess, is forcing myself into uncomfortable situations that could produce luck, uh, luck, as you say in America. I'm like Irish. It's like this say look and look are the exact same word. But um, I think a lot of the luck came from, you know, just getting on a flight to San Francisco and kind of just emailing people and turning up at, you know, these companies like Google and, and you know, Google Ventures and, and just like trying to talk to people um, and just putting myself in. The, and and I, by the way, I did feel very nervous about all of these things. And I always felt very nervous about putting myself in these situations. And I often I remember being on the first flight over to Silicon Valley and just sweating so much because I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is so stupid. This is going to be so embarrassing, but I'm just going to do it no matter what. And yeah, there is this thing of, you know, hard work only gets you so far, but putting yourself in, I think, potentially quite embarrassing, <laughs> uncomfortable situations like giving talks and stuff like that when you know you're not ready, that yep. really pushes your career a lot. Exactly. And it's just, yeah, I love that you started the book with that. That was really special. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. So the workshop or playbook. What, in your words, what is this a book about? Why did you write it? Okay, so Workshop or Playbook is a a book that teaches you how to design your own custom workshops. And for me, so as a UX designer, um, as a product designer, um, one of the things that was missing from my skill set was the ability to sort of get clients and get stakeholders and get other people on the team all on the same page before the project really started getting going. So what would often happen is, you know, we would go and start a project with a client and, you know, you'd have the kickoff meeting and then you'd come back next week and show them some ideas. And they're like, oh no, that's not what I was really thinking. And then you come back and then, and then you think you're all aligned. And then you come back next week and you realize someone that someone's changed their mind and it just keeps going in the circle. And it just started getting very frustrating for me and, and, and my co-founder. And so what we started to do is just research the crap out of different uh, methods for getting people aligned. So we're trying design thinking, we're trying business model canvas, value proposition canvas, uh, lean canvas, everything with the word canvas on it. We're, we're really trying to learn like how do like consultancies do this? How do they get everyone on the same page before projects start? How do you become like, you know, more than a designer, but also someone who can help them with their strategy, with their vision. We were doing this because we wanted to make more money, but also be less frustrated. And yeah, then we stumbled across the design sprint and realized that this was like the perfect recipe for starting projects. And that just got us addicted to figuring out how do you build workshops? And that's kind of been, that's kind of been AJ and Smart for the last few years. We're, we're designing custom workshops for all types of companies. And it, this book just shows you in the space of like one hour, exactly how to do it yourself. So what would you say sprint, like the sprint, design sprint framework, that is that a type of workshop or is it also sort of the foundation and then you can kind of build your own workshop around it depending on who you're working with? Like what is, what is It's that? both. Okay. So there's four things, there's four things you need to become a workshop consultant that can really work with every type of company. Number one is having the understanding on how, of how to build workshops in general. So that if you get called and they say, hey, we've three hours and we've got 10 people, you need to be able to go, okay, no problem. Number two is facilitation skills. That's just something you practice. I, mean, I even took things like vocal lessons and public speaking lessons. Most of it was just actually being there and, and, and learning how to be a facilitator. The number one tip I would give to be a facilitator is don't focus on showing off that you know that you know stuff and that you can solve their problem. Focus on being the guide. You're the person who's in the room to help them get their work done. Number three is actually having just a, a Google Doc full of exercises. That's what, what I have. I have like a Google Doc with 100 exercises or more where if, I, if a client calls and says, hey, we've got like 200 people, we need to do this, 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 and this. I don't need to like Google through loads of exercises. I just go to my doc and I'm like, okay, so based on the framework for making workshops, we're going to take this exercise, this exercise, and this exercise, and let's do it like that. Um, and the fourth thing is having battle-tested recipes, things that you, workshops essentially. So workshops are just a string of exercises 
workshops that you've tested hundreds of times and always work. And the design sprint is one of those workshops. It's a workshop that has been battle tested for years before it was even made public. And then afterwards battle tested again and again and again and improved. And the cool thing about having a recipe, like you actually just said, you can take that recipe and tweak it. It's easier to tweak a recipe than coming up with it from scratch. So, you know, when we have to do a strategy workshop for a client, we don't have to make that from scratch. We can look at the sprint and we can add a layer of strategy to that. So you're exactly right. The, the sprint is a workshop. It's also a recipe that you can edit and it, it's a great starting point. It's a very robust workshop that you can use as a starting point. I also can't help but wonder more about your voice lessons. That's so yeah. cool. You did voice lessons to get better at yeah. singing? Actually, no, to get better at singing. <laughs> so I got lucky that my um, kind of pre-training before becoming a facilitator, uh, actually, coincidentally, my co-founder as well, we were both singers in a band. And so we were um, naturally comfortable at performing and also very importantly, um, had practiced how to keep, uh, how to project our voices for a long amount of time. And that's a problem yeah. a lot of people have in workshops. So I just took like, uh, probably when I was like, I don't know, 16, I yeah. took vocal lessons for about six months. And that taught me how to do the correct breathing, correct posture to make sure that I'm able to, because I was able to sing very loud, but only for like 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the vocal lessons definitely helped me. I also took um, public speaking lessons. But I, I think, you know, all of these things, we, ha we train a lot of facilitators within AJ and Smart. And honestly, the way we train them is just by dumping them into the deep end and getting them to try it out. And one thing I should also say is AJ and Smart, the, the team of facilitators are all of them except for me are introverts. So don't, yeah. think, you, don't think you have to be a loud mouth like me to be able to do it. These are extreme introverts that I'm talking about here who do an amazing job at facilitating. I'm really glad you mentioned that. I just got a comment yesterday on one of my videos about someone who is worried about getting into product design because they're introverted. And That's um, not yeah. a problem. Our whole product design team is super, like I'm talking like really seriously introverted. Yeah, and I feel <laughs> a lot of people I work with too are introverted. So yeah, yeah I'll let that fine. Back. Yep. Um, anyway, I personally, uh, I'm a horrible singer. However, I <laughs> started learning guitar about two years ago. And now I'm like, I really want to learn how to sing. Someone told me, um, you know, you don't really need to be, you don't, you, you don't need to be naturally good at singing. You can kind of learn the fundamentals in order yeah. to, be able to hit the notes to, you know, sing at the campfire. And that's like all I want. Um, exactly. So I'm probably going to take voice lessons soon, but I think it all is like, yeah, it's a helpful skill to have if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's also something that's going to help you in your entire life, your entire, like anytime you have to convince someone to do something or talk to someone in a job interview, it's unfortunate that I would probably win in a job interview just because I can articulate maybe a little bit better than someone else or that I come across as more competent mm -hmm. because I seem more confident. It's unfair, absolutely unfair, but it's something you can learn and yes. it is something I learned, right? It is like something that um, to be able to speak so that people can understand me and that I can uh, project my voice is, yeah, it's, it, it, it was just a couple of vocal lessons. Love it. Okay, cool. Do you remember the very first workshop that you ever participated in? Yes. Uh, it was with a company in Germany called Max Dome um, Pro Sieben. They're like a, a TV channel or like a broadcaster. Both myself and my co-founder had an extremely bad flu. Actually, if we had if we had what we had back then, we would have thought we had coronavirus. Um, <laughs> and so we were taking like super strong painkillers just to survive it. Um, and that was the first workshop we'd ever done. It was like 15 people. We we're doing a product discovery workshop. We'd kind of put it together using different design thinking methods and loads of other stuff. It was super stressful. It went on for two days, but it was an unbelievably exhilarating afterwards. But obviously like I didn't do a good job. Like I, I wasn't a good facilitator. I, I, I rambled too much. I talked as much as I was talking now, which you shouldn't do in a, in a workshop. And I, I made the mistake of, of not being the guide. I was more like, the, I was trying to be the hero. I was trying to give them all the ideas, but actually I realized later it's better to take a step back and just to be the person who helps them get their work done in a more, um, I was going to say pleasurable. That's not what I want to say in a more satisfying way. Right. Right. 
So I play a lot of basketball. Oh, cool. And one of my favorite feelings in the world is like when you uh, get, um, when you pass the ball to someone who then passes the ball to the person that makes the shot. And it's like, you just, you visualize like that was going to happen. And it's like, you have to kind of be patient and sit back and like, you're not the one who's going to be scoring and necessarily. Yeah. It's that like vision and like helping the whole team get there. Like that's the greatest feeling. It's, I, it's also missing from the, the corporate world as well is someone who just has your back and wants you to do your best work. You know, yes, we have project, project managers. Yes, we have uh, agile coaches and stuff like that, but it's not really that common to have someone who can come into the room and build a workshop for everybody, run it so that everybody doesn't have to deal with all the politics and all the mess and all the discussions and just makes people's lives better, but doesn't put their own agenda on everybody. And that, that's the unique thing about becoming this like workshopper. Yeah. So do you have a favorite chapter of the book? <laughs> I guess the thing that most people will like is the framework and the framework teaches you exactly how to build workshops. It's called a four C's framework, really, really simple, like very foolproof. And it's like the framework we use internally at AJ and smart. Here it is. Cool. It's the collect, choose, create, and commit. And you can build everything using that framework. Still my favorite chapter is actually just the, the opening, the introduction. Um, which I didn't even really want to write. It was actually Laura, um, the head of marketing here at AJ and Smart. She said, like, it's kind of missing a you know, story of why did you even, why do you care about workshops? And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. I ended up writing it. And I, I actually think that's my favorite part of it. I even think the, that's the most important part of the entire book is like, why do people who do this need to even exist? And luckily it's like right at the start. So if you just have 10 minutes, you can read it. <laughs> I love that. Storytelling is super important to help other people understand like how they can see themselves in anything too. So I'm glad. Thank have, you for doing that. Yeah. Have you read the book Made to Stick, by the way? I haven't. Oh my God. All right. Like, honestly, it's the best book on storytelling ever written of all time yeah. and everything else sucks compared to it. Like there are amazing other storytelling books, but this one's so much better than everything else that uh, everything else just sucks. Thank you. I'm going to buy it after this call. Like it's maybe. amazing. Forget my book, buy Made to Stick. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. way better. <laughs> it's amazing. That's so funny. So um, good. Okay, so my audience is a lot of people who are either trying to get into design, you know, maybe because they're still in high school or they're in college, they're starting their career, or I have a lot of people who are transitioning their career. For that audience, like, what would you say, how can they use this book to apply it to what they're doing right now? Cool thing about becoming a workshop facilitator. Number one, there's, there's a lot of demand for that right now in companies. Um, it's easy for us to see because we're getting a lot of calls, but we can't fulfill that demand. The second thing is it's a soft skill. It's not like, uh, how do you use Figma or how do you use Sketch or how do you make a prototype? It's something you can add on top of uh, what you're already doing just to give you even more of a chance of being able to get a good job. So being able to you know, be a UX designer, but also being the person who can actually run like a product discovery workshop is on, it's a massive career advantage. Whereas if you want to learn UX, you, know, you need years and years of practice and you need a bit of technical skill. Becoming a workshopper, you can you know, watch one of our YouTube videos or get this book or whatever. And by the end of the book or by the end of that video, you can do exactly what is there and you'll have a workshop. So it's, it's something that, of course, you, there, it's, I think it's very easy to get started in running workshops and, and using that as something to kind of boost your career. It's obviously difficult to be excellent at it and to become a workshopper who can just come up with workshops in two seconds. But I think it's a super easy way to get started, especially in like the product world, which is where we are. There's a lack of this, these people who can run these like product discovery, brainstorming, alignment workshops for products. You sort of said that this is like a soft skill. Break that down a little bit more. Like, like what kind of skills is someone who a workshop or like, what are they learning? I think the right on the front cover, actually, what we have is it's a workshop or playbook, how to become a problem solving and decision making expert. Those are the, those are the core skills behind all of this. It's the ability to be a mediator, a facilitator that helps other people make better decisions and helps other people solve problems. So obviously by doing that, you become a good problem solver and decision maker. You become the person who can make those like consulting calls for clients. But in the beginning, what you're doing is you're facilitating other people to be able to do that. And honestly, I think it's one of the most future-proofed skills imaginable. You know, it doesn't matter whether we're in a pandemic or if it's 
I don't know, 100 years ago, there's a need for people to help other people make decisions in governments, in companies, everywhere. And it's like a, it's just like a core, timeless, future-proof skill. And you can grow that skill by learning how to be a mediator, learning how to be a facilitator or workshopper, as, as we're calling it now. Yeah. Cool. I'm so excited to finish reading the book. How can people get their hands on a copy? The first thing you should do is go to workshopper.com forward slash book or ajsmart.com forward slash book. Maybe you'll have a link down there. And there might still be a free plus shipping option, which means we've bought a ton of these and you just have to pay shipping. It's always under $9. So you can get the physical book for under $9. Depends a little bit when you're watching this video. If you're watching this video sort of June 2020 and forward, just search for it on Amazon. It should be there. It should be super cheap. We're self-publishing it, but we're trying to keep it as cheap as possible. Yeah. Is there anything else that you wanted to say about this book? Or any announcements? Well, I would just say, you know, the bo uh, books in general are the things that have completely changed my career. I think there's a lot better books than this, by the way. I mean, I, I, this, is, this, this book is fine. It will, get, it will teach you how to learn workshops. But uh, maybe I'll just quickly recommend three books that I really love that changed my career that I think would be worth everyone else reading as well. So one definitely, like I mentioned, made to stick how to get a message across, how to tell a story, how to convince people with copy. It's, it's a core skill that every designer absolutely needs to know. I think it's important to read The Lean Startup if you're going to the product world because the vocabulary you learn in this book is important because your clients know this vocabulary and they'll expect you to know it in job interviews. So I would recommend reading The Lean Startup. And the third thing for me, Sprint really changed my career completely learning how to help groups of people solve problems. By the way, I didn't write any of these books and I get no money if you buy any of these books. These are my recommendations. So I think that I would just like to leave people with three further book recommendations um, that really helped me in my career. And um, that would be um, The Lean Startup, Made to Stick and Sprint. Yeah, I'll definitely leave those in the description below as well. I love that you said that about The Lean Startup, about uh, language. Because yeah. I also just posted two videos. The last two videos I posted were about definitions. And I was yeah. trying to just provide some context for um, some words that I think people get mixed up often when they're starting out. Because it, it is confusing. If we're not all on the same page about the language that we're using, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be um, even more difficult for us to work I'm I'm glad you posted those videos because it's, it's also something that can lose someone a job in a very stupid way. Like I, sometimes I tell people about lean startup and, and I tell them it's because of the language and they're like, Oh yeah. So you can learn some buzzwords. And I'm like, okay, if you come to an interview at AJ and smart and you don't know what a, a MAU monthly active user, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry, but you won't get the job because that means I have to teach you how to do product work. And so that's why it's actually important in a way to know what the buzzwords are so that you don't need translation for every part of the product process. So I think it's, it's great that you're making those videos. I'm 100% a believer, but I've been, I mean, we've all been in situations. I've been in the room when a client gives me some sort of weird acronym and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I don't know that. Um, but, yeah. and, and then it's fine to say that, but you know, the basic ones you should know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, that was all the questions I have for today. I'm so, so happy that you reached out. I'm glad that we were able to do this call. Thank you so much, Alexa. Good to see you. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.